So you mentioned the asceticism that they had. You want to walk, walk us through that a bit. Uh, you know, is what was that element? What or other major components that stand out to you as this was something that was a, a, a core piece of who these people were? You walk us through some of those things. So the, the asceticism of the Church of the East, or of the I should say of the Syriac Church, mm. um, is is one of the things that comes through most strongly in the documents and things that that are left to us. Um, it, this is why I, I like the Didascalia Apostolorum. That's why I mentioned that because mm. that helps to balance out all the ascetic documents. So not everybody um, practices asceticism in the way that some of these documents describe. But um, when Jesus said to sell all you have and give to the poor, um, when he said that those who enter the kingdom of heaven, are they don't marry or are given a marriage, are like the angels of heaven. Um, these folks took that and, and, and asked, how could we, um, let me live that way. And so it, there was a, there became a tradition of um, the monks of Syria living rather extreme lives. So they would, uh, they would uh, renounce, you know, the comforts of a house, the comforts of society. Like um, wow. sometimes they would have calling hours because lots of people wanted to come to talk to them and ask them to pray for them. And they'd say, well, only in the afternoon, you know, between these hours. They, they did lots of things that seem extreme to us. The guy who, who had built himself sort of a, a wooden box. Uh, I didn't, the description's kind of hard to follow. He had these wheels and these wheels and he kind of lay in the middle in a, in a cell where he couldn't sit up. He never could stretch out. And that's how he, I'm not sure if he stayed there 24 seven, but he prayed in there. Um, a story of the guy who was, the, the two monks who were on the side of a mountain and uh, one was reading the gospel to the other. Mm. And, and then he, the one, the reader said to the other one, uh, the other one was, his name was Eusebius. The reader said to Eusebius, so explain to me what I just read to you. Tell me what this means. And Eusebius said, oh, sorry, could you repeat that? And the reader says to Eusebius, brother, you've been so busy watching the plowman down in the valley mm. that you're not even paying attention to the scriptures. And he scolded him a little bit, and Eusebius was so convicted by that, they said, all right, I will never look at the, the valley below. I'll never look at the stars above. Mm -hmm. And for the 40 years that he lived after that, he would walk, the story goes, um, a path as narrow as a hand breadth um, to go to church, because he did go to church and go back to his cell. He wore heavy chains so that he um, didn't, so that he would be bowed down so he wouldn't see the sun or, or the moon and stars and so on. These stories seem extreme. They seem unhealthy to us sometimes. Mm -hmm. But again, I think they're coming from a place of really trying to do battle with your own passions. And when you talk to this monk, he wouldn't say it's sin to look at the stars. He mm -hmm. would say, I am trying to exercise myself to say no to myself so the mm -hmm. devil can't get me where it really counts, you know, in anger mm -hmm. or lust or something. So whether he was wise to do that or not, um, it was this kind of thing that prevailed for a time in in monasticism mm -hmm. in eastern in in Syria. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to me possible that they were somewhat they took the gospel, and then they were kind of interpreting the gospel in the terms of their religious context. So they were in a very multi in a very diverse religious context. There were Zoroastrians, uh, there were Jews, there were Manichaeans eventually, and Marcionites, there were Gnostics. And so all these people, many of them um, had sort of a disdain for the body and had a belief that you should, the goal in life was to rise above the constraints of human nature and physicality. So mm -hmm. you wonder if the monks um, were, were maybe unconsciously mixing some uh, into mm -hmm. the gospel in the way that they responded. 